Hi guys, it's Oliver from OBR Horology. Today I am servicing a Rolex 1570. Uh, I was silly enough uh, to put the camera in the wrong position, so there is no of the dismantling process, only the assembling process. Right, so um, basically I pulled the movement out of the cleaner and uh, I've got all the parts in the cleaning basket. Um, <clears throat> I like to keep the skate wheel pallet, third wheel and fourth wheel, and the uh, the uh, driving wheel that sits on the third wheel, and and the center seconds pinion all in the center basket because they're all quite small and fragile. Um, when oiling the jewels for the balance, uh, I'm always using 9010. What I tend to do is I hold the jewel with my tweezers flat on the bench and then I come in with a small uh, drop of oil and place that in the center. Now, I have a tendency of using less oil than what's needed so I'll sometimes go back and add some more after. What I do next is I flip over the cap I bring it close and then I pop it on top. Um, it's really important to get this nice and flat. With this one, I've struggled a little bit, so I've double checked it. And you wanna make sure that the oil is centered right in the center and doesn't banana off or go any other weird directions. Um, I use an old oiler, like a probe, and I've sharpened it. And I use that to undo the um, shock springs on the balance so that I can insert the uh, the jewel into the right place. Um, it's important to be really careful when taking these, taking these out as the springs can bend or distort. Once again, putting the spring back on is pretty simple. You just gotta push it down and back over. Um, I like to double check and just make sure and kind of push it in to make sure it's in there nice. Um, once again, I'm just double checking to make sure that the oil is still centered as sometimes when you put that in and the balance stuff sits in there, it can move or pull in any uh, you know, certain direction depending on where the oil is sitting. Right, next thing we've got to do is remove the balance. Now there is um, some little spots underneath the balance cock where you can get your screwdriver in to lift it and remove it off. Um, generally when doing this, I'll try and use like some nice tweezers that are you know, protective and won't mark or damage it. And then I flip it over carefully. I'll then situate it and put it back into the basket out of the way and then just cover it up. Um, with this one, I actually got a whole new barrel. Now, this barrel uh, was made by a gentleman in, in America called Zach's Miami. Um, and he's made a really, really, really good product, to be honest. Um, you know, it costs more um, than like what other stuff does, but it's a far superior product. And so you get better amplitude and more consistent power and output. Now, oiling this, um, I always use HP 1300, top and bottom of the barrel lava. And I'll oil that beforehand. And basically what I try and do is I'll put a couple of little dots on there and try and wrap my tweezers around, not my tweezers, my oiler around and spread that oil back and forth. Um, if you leave that oil in one location, uh, what happens is it kind of pulls and then just spreads everywhere unnecessarily. Um, I always add more oil, so I always opt for less oil. Uh, at this point, I've just got some roddy code just to get rid of any dust or potential little marks that are on there. Um, make sure you use a really clean piece, uh, otherwise um, you can get some residue and on there. Right, the barrel's in place. Next, I'm putting the setting lever screw in place. I've got to make sure I put it in the right hole though, as you can see. Um, now with this one, um, we need to replace the 
the barrel whoosh uh, these do have a tendency to wear and they and they do need to be replaced every service that's all done now so i just got to locate the uh, bridge on into the correct spot uh, since i've already oiled the barrel arbor i don't need to oil the bushing next you want to put the uh, screws into the right spot um, one is obvious where it goes the other one um, unless you know it's not obvious so always refer to the technical guide um, and make sure you put the screw in the right hole um, otherwise when you go to put the automatic bridge on you're going to have issues um, getting that in place um, I always have a tendency as well like I'll nip up the screws at the end and like I'll tighten them and then just just a little bit more just to make sure that um, they don't come out next um, just getting out the gear train wheels and just inspecting them as well just to make sure there's no damage or wear um, I did end up replacing the center wheel in this one anyway so um, I just wanted to make sure that it was all clean and all good um, once again uh, I put a little bit of HP 1300 on there and I wrap it around before I put it into the um, into the main plate I also like to oil the uh, that top part right there um, beforehand and as you can see once again wrap it round to spread that oil All right next wheel goes in and then the fourth wheel goes in uh, the third wheel that went in just uh, just then, just before, uh, that has the driving, that's where the driving wheel attaches to it, uh, through, which goes through the gear train bridge. Basically at this point I'm just inspecting, making sure it's all good, and the next wheel to come out is the escape wheel. Now this has to be, um, I think there's a little bit of a hair on here which I had to get rid of just on one of the arms. This uh, sits into a cap. Now the cap has to be oiled. Um, so you have to oil that. You can oil it beforehand, you can oil it after. It really just comes down to preference. Um, I've kind of skipped through in this video and I've already oiled, oiled that one, so just for ease. Uh, the main thing to look out for is you want to get that post through and before you put any pressure down on the plate. So I just maneuver it into position. Once it's in position, there's another two screws. What I, I use peg wood. Um, you can also use like a, uh, a nylon stick, uh, which Bergeon make. And what I do is I just maintain pressure on the bridge so that when you're screwing it down, nothing pops up. At this point now, what I'm doing is I'm checking for end shake just on that center wheel, just make sure it's all good. And just checking for gear train freedom. I also do that with a couple of the other wheels as well. Um, at that point then, I just want to nip it up again just to make sure that it's all it's all good before um, I move any further right next gotta put that second wheel in um, how I can tell where this one goes is there is some light marks on the bridge where the screw actually tightens down onto it um, so that makes it easier to know um, while you can put the screw into different holes, it's not correct. And when you go to put the automatic bridge on, you're going to have uh, issues and it's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt just to take it out and put it back in. Um, once again, just checking end shakes and just making sure it's all good. 
right. At this point, I like to flick over to the dial side um, and do a couple of little things here. So first things first, I like to oil the gear train. So you'll probably see me come back and forth a couple of times, try and oil. I always like to have less on the oiler. Um, that way you avoid any potential spillage onto the, uh, the top of the jewel and you avoid any issues with capillary attraction, which may cause it to pull out. Now I've got a, um, you'll notice that I'm also doing the skate wheel um, jewel at this point because I haven't done it. I left the cap off. I just got to get that out and then get the uh, spring onto that one. There is a, there definitely is a size difference between uh, the balance and the escape wheel um, jewels. So I'm just getting all the winding and setting now out at this point. Um, I just wanna make sure they're all good get them into position and um, start uh, oiling posts and any components. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm oiling the third wheel. Then I'm gonna to touch the uh, minute wheel post. So you've probably seen I wrapped it around there a couple of times. Uh, that is where the cannon pinion sits onto. I like to put a little bit so this is HP 1300 on both that, the third wheel and the minute post. Bit cheeky, push it on with my tweezers there. Right, at this point I'm oiling the intermediate setting post. As you can see, I like to wrap it around. Just double check that I've got enough on there. That is the yoke post that I've just oiled with HP 1300. My head's in the way. I'm just inspecting a couple of things. Right, so this is what's called the setting lever. The setting lever engages with the screw on the other side. Um, it's always notorious and a little bit of a pain in the butt. So there's no real, well, there is an easier way, but I'm lucky. I got it pretty easy, straightforward. Right, the next components to go in uh, the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. Now, these components are greased. Uh, there's two trains of thought uh, around greasing these. Oh, well, there's actually a couple at the moment. Some people so the new technical guides for Amiga are saying to use HP 1300. Uh, I believe, I have to double check, um, but a lot of the old technical manuals have always said to use grease. Um, some people have been using Molly and still use Molly, um, and it is a good grease. Um, it just, um, sometimes there's a residue left over and it can dirty your cleaning solutions quite a bit. Um, I've since transitioned to this blue stuff, which I've forgotten the code for, which I will put down if anyone asks. Um, it's basically a high friction grease, like Molly, um, and so it creates for a smoother action. Uh, I can certainly get into the technical arguments around, you know, grease versus oil in the winding and setting, um, but we could probably be here for days. Um, 
So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of uh, grease where the setting lever engages with the yoke uh, for smoother functioning. And yet next I'm putting in the yoke spring. Um, I missed out in the video. Uh, I always put a little bit of HP 1300 uh, where the yoke engages with the uh, clutch wheel as well. Now, I almost did it. I was about to put the uh, cover plate on, but I realized, oh shit, better put that minute wheel. And then also the intermediate setting wheel has to go on as well. Um, I've also skipped ahead in this video and because uh, my uh, head was in the way uh, I've, when I've assembled the uh, cap uh, for the uh, skate wheel. So I'll show in another video how I do that. They can sometimes be a little bit fiddly to get in that spring. Right, so now we're just putting the screws in on the cover plate. Um, I'll use a piece of pegwood again. Once again, you can use a bit of plastic, uh, like hard plastic to hold it down. That just stops any, um, you know, anything jumping or moving out of place. I always do the screw on the right first because the screw on the left has a post to hold that side into place. Um, there's a couple of trains of thought on around like whether to engage that beforehand or afterhand uh, with the setting lever. Uh, you can go either way really. It's up to you. It depends who you talk or ask. Um, I actually had to take it off again because I wasn't sure if I actually oiled the third wheel pivot. I was having a bit of a moment. Uh, filming's kind of kind of threw me off, so I had to unfortunately take it off and double check, which I did. So all good. Uh, once again, I put some grease on where the cover plate and the setting lever engage with. because there is a, there's a significant amount of friction uh, in the winding and setting. And even if you um, use Epilum um, to hold the oil in place, uh, depending on who you ask, it does, the, the oil can travel. So that's why I kind of opt for grease, but I do also understand why people use oil right just using getting the balance the cap and the jewel so we've got to oil those so i'm left-handed so i always grab tweezers with my right hand and just make sure just make sure my oil is clean and whatnot i grab it and i'll just put a little bit right in the center now i always go for a little bit more so I like to add a little bit more and get a nice like little mound built up. Right, what I like to do here is I'll get that cap and I'll move it super close to it. Position it, get it on twist and then you just go bang, chuck it on and you're sweet. And then make sure I've got no bananas. Um, if the oil distorts, you have to oil again like you don't have a choice because what will happen is the oil in three six months it'll be pulled out of place by capillary attraction and then people are like essentially a pivot just running on dry oil at that point so you kind of got to nail the oiling down otherwise you're uh, going to be in trouble Right, back to the movement side again. Now, we still have left uh, the ratchet wheel, 
the crown wheel, um, the overdrive wheel, the center seconds pinion, the pallet, pallet bridge, and the balance to do. Uh, first thing I like to do is just get all these components in place. We have a couple of screws. Um, I do recommend, so I've sharpened all my screwdrivers beforehand to make sure that they're the right um, thickness and widths uh, for every screw. Uh, I just like to go back around all my screws and just make sure that I have tightened them, actually tighten them up. Um, we have the crown wheel here now. Uh, so the crown wheel, there's a washer underneath the crown wheel, and the crown wheel goes on. Uh, there's a slight little step here, so I always like to oil that uh, HP 1300 because that is a high friction component. Um, and I put two little drops either side of this, and then I put the crown wheel core in place, and that needs uh, two screws uh, to be held in, held in place. Now at this point, uh, still, um, I haven't tightened down the the screw on the uh, the ratchet wheel. I might, I might have also called the cr um, the clutch wheel, which is on the. Uh, Winding and setting side the wrong name earlier on. So what I'm using here is the so it's a piece of plastic made by Bergeon. It's hard plastic, and I just use it to just carefully keep the ratchet wheel in place so that I can tighten that um, screw up a bit. Uh, main thing I want to check for is gear train freedom. Is there any backlash? Um, is it sluggish? So normally what you want to see, you want to see when you move the uh, the ratchet wheel, if when you wind it manually, you want it to see it, the power to go through smoothly. You then want it to either A, like when the power stops, you know, it just stops nice and crisp, or ideally you would like what to happen is what's called backlash. Um, backlash is a really good indication of gear train uh, freedom. Uh, so the fourth wheel that I'm oiling now and the escape wheel, I'm using 9010. Um, for the center wheel and third wheel, I use HP 1300. And once again, I always like to add more oil. So I always use small amounts and then, and then add to it. Um, all I'm doing at this point is I'm like kind of reflecting the movement in the light just to make sure that I don't have any oil on the tops of the jewels. Um, and just make sure that I've oiled it correctly. Um, I always like to just like double check all my oiling like before I move on to any steps and just make sure I haven't stuffed any art thing up. You know, maybe add some more, maybe do something again and, and just be a little bit uh, pedantic really. Um, once again, my uh, big, old, big old head was in the way for the oiling of the escapement. Um, pallet is uh, so the pallet pivots aren't oiled but the pallet stones are oiled with a special pallet grease uh, I think it's the number is 9415 I could be wrong that's alright um, with the balance cock I started at one I started at essentially 90 degrees sometimes even more to the movement and then move that across and then maneuver the um the movement as well just to get it and then you'll see it starts a nice action because i've already wound it up or pre-armed it a little bit um at this point here what i'm doing is i'm checking to make sure a balance wheel is flat i'm going to check and shake make sure there's no hairs i'm going to check the hairspring make sure the hairspring's flat it's round make sure it's all good i'm just checking the screw now tightening it that up I'm putting a little bit more power now uh, on the ratchet wheel. Reason being, I want to feel the tension. Uh, I want to feel how it, when it winds. Um, realistically, ideally as well, 
at this point you should have the, the stem in which i don't uh because that can make a bit of a difference in how it feels right next i'm putting on is the overdrive wheel now i've just put that in place now I'm, I'm making an initial assessment of um like depthing because if sometimes what can happen is you can either a push it on too deep b not push it down far enough um and, and that can cause issues and that can be because of a couple of different reasons and and usually like the the hole in there is worn you know and it's just loose and that has to be tightened sometimes um you want that wheel engaging in the middle of that center seconds pinion um if it's any higher or lower it can cause problems like you can see that wheel rubbing on the gear train bridge or it can be too high um and they're all potential problems uh i use 901 a little bit of 9010 on the um center pinion when i put it through as well and make sure your your uh oilers aren't magnetized which appears minor um, you've got to be pretty careful handling this and as you'll see it'll just flick out which is done like so right that's in now uh you want the retaining spring there is an up and there is a down there is a right way and a wrong way. And this one can be a little bit frustrating to kind of get in and a little bit annoying to locate sometimes. You just gotta like adjust it and, and the tension of this spring does have to be set as well. Um, you don't want the you don't want there to be so much tension that it's sucking out a shit ton of amplitude. But you don't want there to be so little tension that it's not making a difference. What, what you can find, if there's no tension on that, um, that center seconds pinion can jump out, move around. The center seconds hand can start to flutter sometimes. Like you'll notice it, it, it looks weird. Um, and you'll notice it will kind of jump around a little bit. So you do have to adjust the tension on that. And it does have to be set. Um, and it can be a little bit of mucking around and another thing to look out for is any wear on that on that spring on the underside of it and they do have to be uh, replaced so as you can see I've just put the stem and crown in um, I just want to feel what it feels like now Right, our wheel goes on. Don't forget washer. That's important. Uh, a lot of time people dismiss the importance of that little washer, but yeah, don't forget it. It is important. All right. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm assembling the the dial. Um, before I'm putting the automatic section on because the automatic section can be put on and it's better to put it on in the case in my opinion um, reason being uh, if you're trying to put the dial on hands on while the automatic section's on you've got the rotor on it's moving around and there's potential for damage um, so this dial has seen better days but that's pretty normal and standard and you can see like there's like there's a there's a mark around where the hour uh sorry where the the center where the hour wheel is there some slight like uh, discoloration well not discoloration but there's a different tone to it um what i'm doing at this point is just screwing in the screws for the uh dial legs just to secure the dial in place um it's really important just to take your time here and, and not rush this because you don't need to slip and scratch the dial um, that can be a bit of a freaking nightmare 
if that happens. So yeah, slow and steady wins the race. Now, I have both the, I have probably about five, six different tools for uh, fitting hands. And so what I'm doing here, I'm just using a bit of clean Rydeco just to clean that off. Um, and then after that, I'll use the sticky dots as well, just to clean it off as well. Cause these hands have got like old residue on them and some stuff. Um, so just trying to like, just clean them off just a little bit. Now, there is more tools than you can poke a stick at to fit hands. And realistically, it just comes down to whatever you feel most comfortable with. I have a really, so I have both the really expensive Bergeon set um, with the press, and then I have like these cheaper steel ones with the um, uh, like old school Bergeon thing. Now what I did with this tool to make it really useful I highly polished the end and reduced the external diameter so that uh, basically there's only a really, really small portion of that piece that touches right uh, near the center of the pipe. So you're not getting like the, you're reducing the risk of damage and any potential problems uh, when fitting the hands. Right. Next, go do the automatic section. Now, I've already um, replaced the uh, rotor post on this one, and I've just oiled it. So we use 9010 with this one. You got to get that um, that C. C clip on first, which can be a little bit annoying. Um, you can probably see in, in the video there, there's the old barrel right there. Now that was like a massive amount. You can see like there's a massive gash out of that. And that is just from um, some old wear and just crap grinding around in there that's caused that damage. So um, what we've done is, um, got that barrel from a gentleman in the states that makes them and makes a very very good good product and who i recommend supporting right uh both the reversing wheels go in uh you got to make sure that you put the other wheel in as well at this point Just want to make sure that everything's lined up everything's in place as you can see i forgot to put that in now that has to engage with both those pinions tuck her on and get all three things lined up now i actually do have an automatic bridge uh, movement holder for this caliber and realistically i do like recommend using it um just being in the middle of filming, totally forgot. Um, but you can get those uh, made. Well, there's a couple of people that make them all over the place. Uh, if you're in Australia, the gentleman that makes the automatic bridge movement holders is called All Time Co. He's based up in Queensland. They're like 40 bucks each. And honestly, like they save you a whole lot of hassle. They keep it all supported and stable, um, you know, and reduce the risk of any potential like problems or stuff ups um i apologize my little hands are all in the way um uh once again just chucking this minute hand on just be really careful like handling hands like, it's so easy to like cause potential scratches and problems so i always just try and be as careful as possible once again i'm now using a smaller piece get it lined up and you know this tool you know it's kind of shunned upon a little bit but I love it I've modified the hell out of it and it reduces like a significant risk um, I do use the Bergeon one quite a bit like the, the nicer one but I just find that you know when I'm working on stuff 
that's worth a lot of money. I want to make sure I don't stuff it up. Next thing I know is a sticky dot and everything. Um, so I did that to the, to the minute hand. That just gets rid of any like any stuff off the dial, any stuff off the hands, like dust, you know, any potential like residue. Um, yeah, and it's just yeah helps. Right, second hand going on. That's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I still haven't put the automatic section on. Um, what I've done is I've just located that, flip it over. I'm actually using my old um, barrel closing tool. I find it's a good little diameter. Right, we're coming to the final end of it. Um, I like to just check it, you know, for dust. Um, any fingerprints, that kind of stuff. Um, I like to oil it with, um, so. Oiling the, uh, the crown there, you want to use, uh, I use fumbling. Uh, which is this white stuff um, you can see I put a little bit too much on my screwdriver blade there and I've gone yep too much so I just get rid of it and chuck it on the back of my hand once again I like to wrap it around um, we've already chucked seals in this one so we're good to go at that point there we go that's gone in nice now we just have to tighten up the set lever screw and make sure that's all good um, I like to put a little bit of fumbling on the external crown seal as well now this customer, rightfully so, he wanted the case left untouched. Um, he didn't want the plexi changed at all, so we just polished that by hand. And that just, um, you know, preserves its value. Um, I'm just tightening up the movement uh, support clamps just to make sure they're all in, in the right uh, spot. Right, so I've already assembled the automatic bridge assembly beforehand. Um, put the oil where it needs to go, so we've edited it a little bit, so there's some of the oiling that I haven't shown in here, I apologize. Um, just trying to locate it and get it in the right spot. Um, you've got to be careful where you touch it, you know, like, as you can see, I'm using, like, metal screwdriver, so I'm, I'm being very careful, like, where you place them. You don't want to poke and leave scratch marks. Um, so if you do want to put any, like, you know, you just use a peg wood, like that's not going to leave any damage or scratches. And then you move the rotor around to make sure that it's engaged and it's actually winding. Next thing you want to do uh, is put the screws in. Um, these are blued. And because we've got the other screws in the right spot, it's quite obvious. Can be a little bit frustrating with the rotor you know uh, i've got finger cots on so i generally touch it with um the finger with the finger cots on now what i do is i'll just go around quickly um, and i don't tighten them all the way down but i'll go one by one check to make sure that it's working i manually wind it and that way i can feel how it feels i chucked it on the time machine it's doing like you know really good amplitude so i'm super happy about that and then i'll go back through and tighten the automatic bridge down and that's basically it um then it comes down to testing some regu finer regulation and uh bob's your uncle <laughs>